Hey guys, Pablo with BND, and today at Top Reddit Post, we're gonna be taking a look on entitled parents against the military. But before we start, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and the bell notification sign for more content coming up every week. And for our first post, Entitled Mom delays military flights and costs government thousands of dollars. So, I just found out about this subreddit about a week ago, and boy, do I have a story for you. A little bit of background to help. I'm a US Marine who was recently stationed in Okinawa, Japan. So, when you get stationed overseas, especially in Japan, there isn't a specific process to get everyone where they need to go with regards to flights. Basically, everyone their families get put in flights to Seattle International Airport. Once there, it's usually an uncomfortable 4 to 12 hours of families and service members sleeping on floors throughout the terminal and USO and wait for the 2 a.m. TSA screening and the pre-flight check-in for the 7 to 8 a.m. flights. The flights to Seattle are traditionally government-contracted flights, so it's only military personnel and their families, and the planes only stop at military bases from there. So fast forward to the very first stop, mainland Japan, 15 hours of flying later. My wife and I and my service dog Zoe get off the plane along with all the other military families and pets. It's been a long flight. Everyone is irritated and grumpy and just wants to get everything over with. We have two more stops at different bases to let people off. Entering Titled Mother, EM exits the plane with everyone else at our first stop. We have to sit in the staging area because seeing as we are now in another country, we can't go anywhere without going through customs. EM begins to loudly complain that the environment's not comfortable enough and that the air is too humid. Wow! In Okinawa? Who would have guessed? At this point, she's just being generally annoying but everyone ignores her. We all board the plane no problem. We all really just want to leave and get to our final bases. Fast forward to our second stop around two hours of flying later. Still mainland but closer to Okinawa as we tax towards our next stop at the terminal to drop people off, I got a snapshot from a marine who used to work for me. He's on the runway and there's like three to four other planes with families behind us. It's pouring rain, but they're going to let us off the plane to stretch our legs again while some of the families actually depart. Everyone stands up and gets ready to get off the plane when the pilot comes on the intercom and say we all have to be seated again. No explanation. I message my friend on the flight line and ask him if he knows what's going on. He says that the departing families have exited the plane, but that a spouse still on board was causing problem. He comes up to the plane and I walk up to the front to greet him. Haven't seen him for seven months. I begin to ask him what's going on. Re-enter entitled mother. Entitled mother is talking to the flight attendants along with the sergeant and the staff sergeant. Her son, I'd say around 4 to 5 years old, had air sickness. Nothing more. Just a little nausea and a headache. But he is not feeling good and he needs to see a doctor. Now. He can't breathe. Ma'am, we just had him looked up by a corpsman. A Navy medic for Marines. He's fine. We can just grab him some Advil or Tylenol for his headache and he'll be fine. No, he has swollen glands, see? She starts jabbing the kid in his neck with her bony fingers at this point. We're not leaving this plane until he receives medical attention. That's it. The staff sergeant makes eye contact with me and my friend and just signs and rolls his eyes. He can't even finish saying, ma'am before she has an outburst overseeing this. I'm sorry. It's something wrong with me caring for my son? Get him a doctor now. Ma'am, it's after working hours. It's around 6.30 p.m. All official medical staff has gone home already. 
If we want to get him extra attention, I will have to call the emergency landing crew, shut down the runway, and have paramedics take a look at him. And that's just out of question. You are not the only person this flight, and your son is not the only person not feeling well. He'll be fine. At this point, the M explodes and just keeps demanding that they shut down at the entire flight line for her crazy ass. Staff Sergeant goes back and forth with her for a while, and me and my friend laugh as I shake his hand and go back to my seat. At this point, we're now two hours behind schedule thanks to this one person, but a two-hour delay for us backs up the planes behind us even more. She finally takes her seat and we take off for another hour flight to our final stop, Okinawa. We land and she immediately starts up again, going on about how she's going to have their jobs and get them all punished and demoted. Everyone's ignoring her. My wife and I happen to be right behind her when she finally gets off the plane after berating the flight attendants at the front of the plane again. We get to the bottom of the stairs and she immediately turns to a random spouse and goes, Wow, not even my first day on island and I'm already almost arrested. Off a great start. Who knew being an Air Force wife would be so difficult? I wish they would have tried. They would not have had fun. I look at her airman husband and he's just standing there trying to hide himself, ashamed of her at this point, as she starts harass the airman in the airport security duty. We were the last plane scheduled to land on base in Okinawa that night. Thanks to this single woman, the entire staff at the airport had to stay longer. The custom officials had to stay longer. Flight maintenance crew had to stay longer, along with the same exact staff for all the other airports for the three to four planes that were behind us at the last airport. This lady single-handedly cost the government countless thousands of dollars in delays and overtime for contract workers, as well as the extra working hours for service members, all because of a damn headache and nausea. Guys, okay, I know a lot of good military spouses, but I'll tell you something, I was in the military for 10 years, uh, I'm a war veteran, and I've seen the worst in the military as well. And women like this is a common thing. And, and the worst part is, this airman, I guarantee, is probably low rank. A lot of those women... They marry soldiers, they marry airmen, and they think, even that he's still a private or a specialist or whatever their service branch calls them, that they're probably higher than a major or something. They just feel extra important, and the higher they go in the food chain, they get to the point to even wear their husband's rank in their purses, just so people know, hey, don't mess with me. You know, I'm the wife of a staff sergeant, or, oh, I'm the wife of a sergeant major, so you better be in parade the rest in me. I know, those women are crazy. Entitled mom rips my robotics uniform because it is a military assigned ABU. Alright, a bit of background on this. I'm in a robotics group team, and we're given uniforms for us to stand out. We are a military base group, because we live in the military base, so our uniforms are military assigned ABU that is decommissioned as of this point. Me, myself, and I am, entitled mom, TG, trainee graduate, F, friend. So every other weekend, typically Saturdays, the trainee graduates have family come down for their graduations. The food courts... Taco Bell, Pizza Hut, etc. are usually packed. Every weekend, after robotics practice build, I usually go down to the food court for lunch with some of my friends and get some food. Since we're hungry, we don't go home to change first. Sometimes, we get weird stares, and occasionally people ask us about it, but that's it. 
So one Saturday, just a few weeks ago, my friend and I sat down at a table with our food, ahead of the lunch rush, as usual, enter EM and TG, and several other trainee graduates that mean nothing to the story. We're enjoying our food and talking about Reddit memes and who we like and etc. as everyone's flooding in. EM whispers something to TG. You see TG shakes his hand and EM approaches. The conversation goes like this. What the hell are you wearing? Trying to take glory from all the people who actually earned it? Actually, ma'am, this is our robotica uniform. It is the commission and the tag is different. I gesture at the team name that takes up where it would say Air Force. Bull crap! I bet you're wearing that here just to get a military discount. We're on base, meaning we all have a military ID, which excludes us from tax, regardless of our uniform. Give me the ABU. You didn't earn it like TG. TG looks embarrassed, approached his mother. Mom, I believe we should go. I have to get back to the barracks in six hours and we still haven't gotten to do anything we planned on. Paraphrase because I cannot disclose that information. Listen, ma'am. Several people know who we are. It is true. Several of the co-workers go to school with me. And they can vouch for us. These are just our uniforms for our team. I don't care. You did nothing to earn the right to wear that uniform, and that is stolen glory. Take your freaking uniform off now, or I will rip it off you. No. That was perhaps the worst thing I could have done. This lady starts making a scene. Everyone's staring at her. My friend goes red. Excuse me. I will sue you for stealing the glory of my son freaking nerd. You don't understand how much work he did in order to get where he is now. You spoiled ass teenagers, thinking everything is yours and doing anything just to get what you want. That woman grabs my ABU and tries yanking it off me. DG tries pulling her back, but that just made it worse. This leave rips, which isn't supposed to happen, and she stops. At this point, several people are shouting orders at her. Her son's embarrassed as hell, grabbing my ABU sleeve. Hey, buddy, I think we should go now. The lady is screaming loudly to us. Several officers are surrounding her now. We straight up ran to my house as fast as we could with our food. I believe the lady was detained, and I got my ABU stitched back up really easy. Though... I shouldn't have had to. I believe TG also lost his rank, which is entirely unfair, but that's how the military works. So now, after robotics, we just leave our ABUs in the classroom unless we're going directly home. Edit. Sorry if it's bad, my first post to entitled parents. Alright guys, just so you know, it is how the military works, and I know it sounds unfair, but the thing is, when any family member enters a military base, the soldier actually is vouching for them. And a lot of times they have to escort the family member like a mom wouldn't be his dependent. So, yeah, everything that happens on base with anybody that he escorts in, it becomes his fault. He is responsible. And I know it doesn't look right, but... That's how it happens. So, I'm sorry for him. You know, it, it, it really sucks. Veterans Days for Family Barbecues, not actual veterans. I was working a chain seafood place that totally did not have anything to do with lobsters of any color. 9-11 had just happened. That bit's important. Because of that, everyone was suddenly, oh my god. We need to kill someone. And vets were extravagantly honored. Mostly embarrassing so. Like, dude, stop slobbering all my dog tags, what the hell. Anyway, 
There was a staff of roughly 150, of which the majority were servers. Most part-time and super flaky. Two of us full-timers were actual military veterans. Me and a marine who'd seen a lot of time in the sand pit. Veterans Day rolled around later that year, November. He and I were invited to go march in the Veterans Parade. We'd both pulled countless holiday shifts over the last year. Because every holiday is a family holiday somehow. Even New Year's Eve explained that to me. We saw no reason we'd get denied this day off. Put our request in a month in advance. I mean, it was freaking Monday, okay? Holiday or not, least busy day of the week. And that holiday, generally not known as a let's go eat shrimp kind of day. Two of us out of the whole staff, actual vets, who had worked Christmas Eve, Christmas Day, New Year's Eve and New Year's Day, Thanksgiving, Valentine's Day. What a freaking horror show that day is. Word of advice, peeps. It's just a number in the calendar. Pick any other day. Easter, Mother's Day, Father's Day, and on down the line to President's Day. We worked them all. All this because we had no kids. It was our turn long ago, and now it's our turn to pull special privilege card. Veterans wanting Veterans Day off because they're invited to march in a parade. Two months after 9-11. Ha <laughs> ha No. The manager and entitled parent disagreed. We were informed that Veterans Day is, get this, a family barbecue holiday. And we're both scheduled for doubles, 16 hour days. These naughty bitches with kids smirked at us along with the manager. A family barbecue holiday? Oh yeah. They told us over and over. It's for family barbecue, so suck it up, buttercup. And can maybe imagine how we felt about this. Not just the denial, but all the freaking EPs rubbing it in our faces that we couldn't go be vets on our day. Because they have kids and ha ha ha, losers. The manager said it straight out encouraged them. She was zagging and on. Goddamn woman. Well... Freaking with vets not a good idea. The military, among other things, teaches a super valuable life skill. How to screw with authority and get away with it. If you're adept at this, you can make bad things happen to authority. Need a good big tough luck, but my luck is freaking fabulous. Also, I don't give a damn anymore, which helps to pull things like this off. Okay, manager, you wanna play? Wants to be a horrible person for no reason to hurt two vets? It's on now. Let's dance, girl. Dress codes from Corporate B Damned. I worked my dress greens, medals and all, and he got into his desert camo. And we work our 16 hour shifts with our dog tags hanging out, explaining to everyone that we're supposed to be in the parade, but it turns out that Veterans Day isn't actually for veterans, but for family barbecues and oh well. Hot dogs are super important, see? And we fought for their freedom to grill some pig lips. So you know, totally cool. It's not like we wanted to be in the parade or anything. Manager keep trying to squat at us. We keep looking at the wall behind her. She tried to scream us out in front of customers. This is not done. If you're a good manager, we looked at walls and customers bitch her out. A whole lot. It was beautiful. Don't know why she kept trying. Not like we keep different clothes on site. Want me to change? I'll be back in an hour and a half. Maybe. Deal with it. Horrible civilian having a power trip. Made mad money that day. That didn't make up for it. Being a vet mostly sucks. Please, do not thank me for my service. Okay, I know you mean well, but don't. Thanks. What did help make up for it 
record-breaking numbers of customers called the corporate complaint line and chewed some ass about how this restaurant manager treats their veterans. I've never seen such returns. Usually, you get maybe one or two bad calls in a week. There were dozens. It was glorious. Wish to God that that woman had gotten fired. Came so close. Lost her ever important bonus for the year. She was mad as hell at us. But you know what? Screw her. And screw all the entitled co-worker parents too. Hope they enjoyed their freaking barbecues. Manager tried the no-schedule passive firing on both of us. That didn't work either. Too many people calling us to cover shifts. He and I quit at the same time. Must have been fun for a bit. Manager might have had to get up off her ass and maybe carry a thing. The horror. Alright guys, a couple of things. One, do not screw with your veterans. They do everything they can for your country. You may not agree with wars, but they're not the ones declaring wars, okay? I'm a veteran as well, as I mentioned. I'm a war vet from Iraq. Well, not actually from Iraq. I went to Iraq. Uh, and I'll say, I also don't like people saying thank you for your service. Um, you learn to be polite about it, but it's not something I enjoy. You know what? You want to thank me for my service? Hit that subscribe button, give me a thumbs up, leave a comment, and hit the notifications bell. And I hope to see you guys in a couple of days, maybe even tomorrow. And have a great week. Goodbye.